I'm going to do a video today on uh, some rotted logs I had come in. I got a couple logging guys, a couple landscape companies like myself, but they do a lot more tree work. I've been getting some uh, pretty good logs from oak, a lot of oak this year. A lot of times you'll find steel in them and there's a reason or there's not a big uh, cherry picker load. So uh, they'll give them to a guy like me. They'll come in, dump off. It's normally like a 12, 14 foot trailer, a dump trailer. I ended up with quite a bit this spring. I figured I'd do a video. Another thing you got to do is you got to take the bad with the good. So I took I took a couple uh, 16, 18 foot pieces of uh, oak log that had center rod in them. We're gonna I'm gonna show you how I deal with that to get rid of it. And it really isn't a waste. There's still a lot of good wood in most of them, especially oak. Um, the oaks around here. You the base of this oak I measured was 32 inches round. The, the first bell part of that log. And then it goes, it, it stayed at 26 inches for probably the next 16 feet. But I cut it up yesterday and I'm splitting it up today, but I just want to show people that even a log like that, there's still a lot of good firewood. And even some of the stuff I wouldn't sell to a customer as firewood, I'll burn in my greenhouse. And this tree looks like, it, one of them was like a standing, standing dead tree. There's not a lot of moisture in that center pot it rotted in the center then the next eight or ten inches is like real dry wood uh, again i wouldn't sell it to a customer but we're, we're going to start heating that greenhouse probably in another uh, 14 days so i'll show you i've been putting it in little gray buckets that i keep for uh, my landscape company and i'm bringing them down to the greenhouse we'll burn this up first before we start burning the other wood sometimes you'll get oak that's real splintery and um bark falls off that i try to sell clean wood so but i want to show you the log that uh what's left of it this right here uh pieces i'm busting it up on this 40 ton uh county line splitter and that's that's the idea I, i'm getting a lot of this big wood and i'm sick of lifting that onto this super split so i've done i've said this in other videos but i just want to show you how this this works that's uh, about the last piece. There's one here, but that's not bad. Uh, that was the last piece I cut off, 18-inch piece I cut off that had a hole in it. The rest of it was pretty solid, you can see. That's one of the base pieces there. But I bring them over to this 40 ton. I'll show you in a minute. I'll show it running. And I bust them up so they're that size. And then I can, you know, put them on this splitter a lot easier. But I want to show... You end up with some good firewood. Like, that's all backless oak, which I'm going to really try to push. I get quite a bit more money anybody would out of the backless. Uh, it doesn't have to be oak. I, I I tend to get a lot of oak in this this area of New Hampshire. I don't know what bug it was, but a bug went through years ago, and it's uh, made a lot of the big oaks. Like, you, some of these oaks in my yard looked healthy. Then when you went to cut them, there was a six or eight inch center that's like, like over here, this one here that... That's almost like cutting in the roof and tar. I ended up taking all the oaks down in my yard and then uh, in this area, like I'm gonna say 15 miles around where I live, all the tree work I do, most of the time it's because you're taking down a, a center rotted oak. <laughs> so I end up, that's where I came up with the idea of doing the backless oak. But over there, I don't know if you can see it, but I ended up with probably a third of a cord of just good oak to sell um that's gonna be firewood once it dries for next year and i'm gonna end up i'm gonna guess i'm gonna end up with a probably a third of a quarter of this backless oak by the end of the day because i still got quite a few pieces here to do up above where that was center rotted it cracked and this is just like a real dry wood uh, but still burnable so i'm going to show you what i do like this is the centers i wouldn't sell somebody but that will still burn good in my greenhouse so I'm, I've already brought probably five buckets like that down to the greenhouse this morning. and uh, But I just figured I'd show this process, do a quick video. Probably only be like 15 minutes, but I think it's something that people will like to see.
just wanted to show that that's how you bust up the big pieces and i'll just throw them aside and like i said i'll get a pile ahead of me like that then i'll show you how this one operates show you you wanted up a little more bakla soak that's pretty clean that's definitely uh the outsides of those logs a lot of good especially where it's oak uh it's very good firewood i always split it small too so nothing i like about your super split is you can work your way around a rotted piece and that's some of the stuff that was like eh but i'll burn that in my greenhouse I believe we're going to be able to heat the greenhouse probably for three or four weeks with what, what I've got out of the rotted stuff that was in the pile that I got this week. But we'll clean the rest of this up. And even the stuff that breaks apart, if I, I've got the wood stove going, I'm going to throw this in these gray buckets. A lot of those chunks I'm just going to throw in and they'll burn. I mean, that's, that's dry rotted, but like I said, that will burn. There's still pieces of, like, healthy pieces of oak that will... If you're, burnt, if you're thrilling it to go overnight, I wouldn't be afraid to throw that in. That's how quick you can take. And that's another reason I like dealing with these big chunks. Uh, you can fill the bucket fairly quick. And a lot of times I'll take time and stack it in there and you can put a pretty good amount. What I'll do is at, I'll let that get a little more full. Then I'll drag a few pieces to the front so I can round that right up. You can fill a one ton dump pretty quick. Just figured I'd show. I thought this would be a cool video. Show you how I deal with the... I don't get rid of anything. Uh... I'm trying to come up with a way I want to recycle. <laughs> uh, I bought a chipper last year, so the slabs that are coming off my sawmill and everything. I want to try to uh, chip them and sell the chips. And I, I really don't want the waste. Even uh, logs that I cut, the hardwood logs that I do cut on my mill, I got a guy that takes the hardwood slabs. He just has me cut them up 18 to 24 inches, and he takes, uh, he actually buys them. I don't get as much as I would for normal wood, but it's better than burning them or or chipping them but he takes them for his outside wood boiler that the rest of the logs that are that were in those two that, that's actually three three dump trail loads that the people brought me this week that's the only way you can buy this it, it, like i said sometimes they'll give you a load for free if you take the rotted like i'm dealing with that rotted the two rotted logs but because of that i got the load for free and it's still a lot of good firewood i'm, I'm going to end up uh with at least uh probably a half a quarter wood that's that's gonna go over there and get stacked by the time i'm done well i think there was four pieces four 16 to 18 foot pieces but that's a lot of wood <laughs> when it's 20 that's pretty solid 24 to 26 inch round all the way up you'll get a lot of wood out of that i just figured i'd show it and like i said up there you can still see the discoloration but that's that's good wood that that ain't gonna be no issue at all the last piece I got that's actually hollowed is this one. And like I said, you can still see like the darkness in that one, but that's good wood. So that I, I basically got a that one there and those two or three pieces that I split up that ended up making about 12 pieces. But we'll get that. And like I said, that's frozen because it was cold this morning. It's actually February and it's 53 degrees here in my yard. That's why I'm up here doing this. <laughs> But that's normally, if that wasn't frozen, that would be, the, the texture that is, is like a roof and tie. If you cut one of these down in the summer, uh, you'll get into it with your chainsaw, and you'll just, your chainsaw just revs right up, and you're like, oh, crap. And I was taking down this, this field behind me and my equipment. This was loaded with those center-rotted oaks, and I wanted to save a couple just for 
to make the field look better but we got into them and they were all even the ones that looked real healthy had six or eight inch round probably eight feet up the tree already that was quite a few years ago now but um there's still some up on the land up there you'll see those big tall oaks them look he somewhat healthy but uh we took uh i know the logging guy that went up there i think two years ago and he took a lot of them out that were center rotted to the point where they were getting dangerous and i think them are going to follow we'll call this video here i just thought it'd be uh i think it's, it's going to be a short one um but i just thought people would like to see how i deal with these rotted logs and if you're out trying to sell firewood i'm not a firewood i'm a landscape company and this is like a side thing most of the time the wood you see me splitting is coming from my business. I want to get into it a little bit more and I, I, I've been saying that for the last couple of years. So I've made a deal with quite a few logging companies and I've got uh, probably within a 20 mile circle of my house, there's probably like 20 logging companies. Guys that do anything from like just small like one acre lots to guys that do 50, 100 to 100 acre lots. And I'm making a deal with them. I'll take some of the stuff. Uh, even, even some of my buddy, I got a couple of real good friends that are good size logging companies even that base log sometimes is hard to get to go through their chipper uh, to get rid of it that way because mo most of this stuff sad truth is there's times a year where the wood chips are worth more than firewood so a lot of these guys will just dice it they'll just chip this stuff right up um, but I got a couple guys that the, the first eight or ten feet of a log sometimes doesn't go in there without cracking it and they have to beat the crap out of something to get that to crack enough so it'll go through the chipper so I'm going to start getting those chunks. I start, I got a few last year, but this year it looks like um, I'm going to end up a lot more because it's it's um, February and I'm already getting loads dropped off. So I got a funny feeling I'm going to get plenty of firewood to deal with this year. And I'm buying this reasonable. And I'm, I won't say prices, but it, if I'm not buying this real reasonable, there's no way it's worth buying wood. Like you can't buy a grapple load anymore and split and cut it, split it, and sell it, and make any money. Not for me, not enough for me. It takes the enjoyment out of it too. I mean, this is a lot of work. Uh, I like doing it. It's a, I, I don't know if I'm gonna use it as my exercise program or what, but I, I, my landscape company keeps me going pretty good once the season starts. But in the spring and in the fall, I always, I, you know, that's when I normally deal with the firewood I get for my business. I come home all summer long and I dump it in the yard somewhere and once in a while you'll get one log that's good for the sawmill the rest is firewood i try to separate it but this like i said all this stuff i'm doing probably for the next three or four days is stuff that just got brought in by logging companies one's got one guy's a landscaper but he does a lot more tree work than most landscape companies and he's got more coming i believe this week two more loads he, he thinks and i i didn't show it in this video but i also got a lot of pine logs that i think are going to be real nice for the sawmill this year i want to build a building around my sawmill so that that will be another video but um I, i'm glad it, before i had the sawmill <laughs> i used to get a lot of jobs where i ended up with pine logs all the time it's, i i buy the sawmill and of course my business for whatever reason i just haven't had a lot of tree work other than firewood i did have a pretty good amount of stuff ahead of me before i got the mill put together but like I said, we're going to call this video here, and I say it all the time, I'm a landscape company, but I do a lot of other things. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Even if you don't want to subscribe, hitting the like button helps me out a lot. I have a lot of stuff coming this spring. A lot of firewood videos probably coming up. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.